In Magic the Gathering, white, red, or boros is a color pairing most often depicted as soldiers, leaders, and heroes. These portrayals are honestly something we take for granted, as it simply just feels right. I know this because, well, that's the feeling I got when I was poring over each card and writing this video. Before a single word could be put to paper, a question had to be answered. Why is it that the designers lean so heavily on these themes? Sure, there are variations, but as far as two color combinations go, this one is really settled into a main cast of characters. As it turns out, the answers were right in front of me, and in this video we will break down exactly what those reasons are. To do so, we must inspect the four core conflicts between the colors present, that of white and red, colors whose ideologies are antagonistic to one another, in some cases at a fundamental level, as you will come to understand as we discuss our first conflict, that of stability versus restlessness. At the heart of this combination lies a single conflict of feeling that cannot be ignored, one that defines an intangible set of personality traits that may apply to you if these colors resonate with your own experience, and will give us a basis to build larger concepts upon. You see, at its core, white is a color who desires order, which is bred from a need for stability. White searches for ways to bring structure into its life, and each aspect of the conflicts we will discuss are its way of achieving this. While for red, its impulsive and sometimes chaotic life is a product of the restless nature inherent to it. Red is a color that can't sit still and is always pushed and pulled along by its heart. And even though this might seem to some as an act of turmoil, it's instead something red leans into fully. So how then could these concepts come together? You would be correct to assume that this may be an uncomfortable state and yet it doesn't have to be. They can coexist. Just because someone is a restless soul does not mean they do not desire to still have some structure in their life. And on the flip side, structure for its own sake can be stagnation. If we pare this conflict down even further, we begin to see what's at the heart of this conflict. Stability is based in a desire for safety, and restlessness comes from a need for stimulation. In that way, a white-red personality wants to feel safe so that it can pursue stimuli. Perhaps this restlessness and desire for stability comes from an anxious side to the pair. Not only are they people of action, they're also those who are hyper aware of what lies beyond the walls. It's a delicate dance between feeling safe while allowing for motion. Perhaps then this is why they fight so fiercely for the society they have built. It's a need to set up the structures of community for itself and those it holds dear, paired with a desire to proactively take it upon themselves to make it happen and keep it safe. They cannot simply build that wall and sit behind it. They must instead don their armor, hold up their swords and cross the gates to focus that relentlessness into action rather than reaction. It's something that's true in our own lives. Safety for its own sake will leave us feeling empty, but restlessness without any structure is nothing but listless feeling and will also leave us feeling empty. In a way, red and white, when combined, recognize this aspect of its humanity and wish to achieve both, at least in some measure or another. When we talk about things like stability and restlessness, we're speaking to feelings that are fundamental. For this conflict, that of discipline versus passion, we are then witnessing the methods which allow these colors to express those feelings. Once again, we have two concepts which seem antagonistic, while it's this conflict which breeds a philosophy we see represented most in Magic the Gathering, and answers the question I posited above, that of why these themes are so reoccurring, those of the zealot soldier, the inspiring captain, or the raucous hero. 
a form of character who is disciplined in how it carries itself, and that it maintains a control over its actions guided by purpose, all while overflowing with a passion for that cause. It's the resolute or disciplined mind provided by White that allows such passion to have meaning outside of its own self-revelrous satisfaction. In this way, Red is tempered by the forge of discipline and made into something new. But do not be mistaken, it's not just White carrying this pair, as the underlying passion is a requirement to craft such characters. Those who inspire others with their overflow of enthusiasm, which sometimes skirts raw discipline. As discipline without passion is blind obedience, and in the mind of a white red personality such obedience is for dogs, not heroes. In this way, the white red aligned person is one that is devoted to a cause, nation, or people, and places all of its being into it. You see, passion, when set to task and focused, is like that of an explosive force honed to a single goal, while discipline emboldened by passion is at the heart of inspiration. In this way, the white-red character is one who lifts others up through its grander actions and more subtle states of being. It's the character who tales are told of and whose example ignites a fire in the belly of others. I also believe this is where White Red's patriotism comes from, though it is not simply patriotism built on a blind loyalty for a flag, rather a love for a nation and its people, one which sparks strong feelings when it comes to upholding that nation's way of life. It's a form of passion that is rooted in a strong love for a society that is built by their pairing. It's something that is felt strongly for both sides within White Red, and is why we see so many soldiers in this pair rather than knights. While knights are bound by duty, soldiers are bound by patriotism. While the conflicts we have discussed so far are held at a personal level, the natural progression must then be to look at how the colors present are reflected by society. In this case, our conflicts then become governance versus freedom. White is a color that believes there must be structures put in place, otherwise people will fall to chaos, while red states that we must be free to pursue our impulses as order stifles our pure selves. The truth is, this balance is the sort of negotiation we make in the free world already. We accept governance to protect and provide stability which allows us to express our individuality. Sure, this may sound contradictory, but the truth is that enemy pairs are a combination of what may seem like contradictions, but are rather concessions which allow for a new philosophy to flourish. In the mind of White Red, pure governance is fascism, and pure freedom is anarchy. So in that way, it accepts that rules and leadership must be put in place while still asserting that freedom should never be stripped away. Of course, like all things, this is a struggle that is ever fought between white and red, even in a society built from their pairing. The result of such a combination is a level of democracy, that if negotiated with both ideals in mind, results in everyone getting what they need from said society. Though even with this set in place within a community of white red, there is often citizens who fall under two different camps, those who are emboldened to protect the freedoms of its people, leading to those who are rebellious and outspoken, while on the other side it will result in those who are militaristic and conservative, of people who wish to protect their way of life. Neither can be removed, and both are required to exist within a white-red society. That way it doesn't slip fully into one ideal or the other. This system of counterweights allow for both governance and freedom to exist together. And while these counterweights exist, the truth is that most of this society will fall somewhere in the middle, accepting that governance and freedom must exist in equal measure. So far we have traveled from the personal to the societal, 
but I want to take you along as we discuss the big picture in regards to the philosophies and themes of each color present. In this case, the conflicting concepts are that of order versus chaos. The goal being the discovery of that space where these ideals can meet, in some form of cooperation or understanding. You see, when it comes down to it and everything is stripped away, white is a color whose aspirations are to bring order to a chaotic world, while red forms that chaos as a rejection to forcing order onto what not need be controlled. In many ways, chaos and order are a result of what we've discussed, not a source. Red does not aim to be chaotic, it's just that its core themes and philosophies lead to a sort of chaos of being. The same can be said about white. Sure, it does strive for order, but order is the result of a desire for structure. In the end, neither concept on its own is healthy in the mind of this combination, as a life marred by chaos is always on the back foot, while true order will remove any form of passion. What this means is that there must be a flexibility between the two, or that both must exist at the same time. The white-red personality appreciates that there is chaos in everything, and that there is order in that chaos as well, given enough scale, time, or perspective. In reality, both do exist at the same time, from space itself to society, and even further still at a minute level. If we took a microscope and peered down to the smallest atom, its composition would seem chaotic to us. And yet, as we zoom out, it begins to take on a form we recognize. Further still, that form becomes ordered and takes shape as one unified structure. It's as if within order, chaos is always present. And to the white-red personality, this is more than an abstract idea. It's something we must always be cognizant of. In this way, a person may pursue passion that seems chaotic within the greater structures of the society it has built. And this state of being on the part of the individual does not invalidate the order that's built around it. What this means is that actions which seem chaotic but are fulfilling are just as valid as actions taken to bring stability to chaos. Both exist in equal parts, and to deny this is to deny a fundamental aspect of not just humanity, but the foundational building blocks of everything. It's never about some perfect equilibrium between two abstract ideas, but rather a coexistence of conflicting concepts that are both ever-present. In Magic the Gathering, White, Red, or Boros is a combination mostly represented by soldiers, leaders, and heroes. And as we've come to learn, there is a reason behind this. Ideals such as discipline and passion do indeed forge characters who lead by example and put themselves on the line for others or a cause they believe in. They are characters who understand the precarious balance between governance and freedom, and on a personal level deeply feel the tug of such conflicts as stability and restlessness. Forms of being based in a desire for both stimulation and safety. It's a dance you play over and over again as you move in and out of such states. Above all of these concepts is the basis for the most fundamental of building blocks, that of order and chaos, states ever present in not just the decisions we make, but that of the universe that makes up our being. So if you find yourself dancing between these two states, then perhaps you, my friend, are white-red. With that, I will leave you to ponder over what I've said today. And if you want to dive even deeper into the color pie, then check out the rest of the definitive color pie collection. On this playlist, I have every single one of the mono colors covered, and I'm making my way through the dual colors as well. So stay tuned. I would also like to extend a special thank you to my patrons for their support. With that, friends, I will catch you in the multiverse. Bye.